We're at Ubuntu 10, or Maverick Meerkat, and today we want to look at some client-side mounting commands. Now the first thing I'm going to do is sudo nano, and I'm going to edit my etc host file, and add a host name. And you can tell, um, in this case, Network Manager is running on this you know, system. It's a laptop, and that's great. You know, I want to use DHCP for something like a laptop, um, but uh, notice how that it, you know, it dynamically writes to the file as it leases an IP from DHCP. So again, we said this in other tutorials, you wouldn't want that for a static IP address for a server. You'd actually want to uninstall Network Manager. Matter of fact, I recently had an issue. Um, I was getting a, a, a portal called, uh, it was a free, free open source Perl CGI portal uh, called Web App uh, to run. And I had, I, you know, one of the issues in Maverick Meerkat is that this would be mapped to the, the same host name or local host would be mapped to multiple IPs like the static IP and the dynamic IP. And so the Perl script couldn't, you know, find things properly and it couldn't path things out properly. And, the, you know, the way to fix it was to pull this out of the host file and uninstall Network Manager and sort of go back to the, you know, the standard way that, that Linux or Unix does things. But I'm going to go ahead and add, you know, um, the IP address for Pegasus in here just so we can see that you can use these commands with either an IP address or a host name. I haven't set up DNS yet, and if we did, we wouldn't even have to do this, but right now we'll just use the host file. Pegasus, and doesn't really matter, it's not case sensitive, but um, just kind of being picky there. So I'm going to do uh, Control X and Yes to save and Enter, and I just want to verify that I have saved the changes. Okay, and there's Pegasus, so I'm going to verify that I can reach it by IP yes and verify that I can reach it by host name yes okay and what I'm going to do now is I'm going to go over and and you know mount this if I were to graphically mount it here in the genome desktop windows environment via Samba now that I have a host name mapping, I can use a host name. So now I'm on a remote server, Pegasus, and these are directories I would have to, to log into to authenticate, like here's right. Notice when I do that, Ubuntu adds a sort of a shortcut on my desktop there. Um, here's, let me go into one I need to authenticate with. Let me, let me see, how about this one here? Okay, and then, because guest access is, is set to no here, so. But same thing, if, you know, once I authenticate, and I kind of get past that. It'll mount it here as a shortcut on my desktop. And so these are actually mounted to folders. So, you know, we looked at how things are mounted locally, you know, partitions um, and drives and things. And we said that everything is, is mounted to a folder, you know, sort of the, the way things are set up under Ubuntu Linux, and, and for that matter, also uh, Red Hat, whether it's Debian or, or Red Hat Fedora. So uh, just using the mount command, you, you can see what I have mounted so far. You know, these are actual partitions on, you know, on the drives on this laptop. Um, but the, you know, these are local mounts. So we're going to use our, our command line tools. To get the suite of tools that we need, we need to install SMBFS first. So I'm going to do sudo and apt-get and install and SMBFS. Uh, which will sort of be, you know, the Samba file system utilities. Okay, and now with that installed, uh, I can use some of these, you know, these new mount commands. Okay, with SMBFS installed, we have now have several new, uh, you know, command line tools that we can use to mount shares and directories, both with Windows and with Ubuntu or, or Linux uh, over Samba. So, one of the first things I want to do, remember the mount command works by sort of mounting everything to a folder. So again, we looked at this in other tutorials. Locally on the system, we mount partitions and drives to folders and things. And things will, you know, commonly be mounted to media. In this case, you know, what's in the CD drive has been mounted to the, the folder media. Or if I plugged in a USB drive or a flash drive. But also things in the network need to be mounted to folders. So what I'm going to do is, I'm just going to make a folder here, and I'm in my home directory, so I'm going to say sudo, um, and I actually don't really even need it necessarily being in my home directory, but I'll just use sudo mkdir to make a directory, and let's call it mount me, all caps, okay? 
So there is mount me and we'll use that as a folder to do our mounting too. And now I'm going to do sudo and the first command um, I'm going to use the mount command dash t to specify the type sys the common internet file system this is sort of the new way to do it or you know sort of the modern way um, there, there's also smbfs which we'll try but that's sort of deprecated so we'll do this one first two forward slashes the IP address or the host name of the server you want to mount another forward slash um, the name of the share that you want to mount to and then finally um, the name of the folder that you created that you're going to mount this network share to now a little bit of differences here if this were uh, Red Hat or Fedora you would need a forward slash there the syntax is a little different but with Debian and Ubuntu if you're going to use a relative path in a directory there's there's no forward slash there okay and so I'm gonna go ahead and do this and this will ask me for whoever I've set up on that server you know in this case being another Ubuntu another Linux server with a Samba password it's gonna query me for the password and so I'm just gonna go ahead and put the password in of, of a Samba user account notice what happens here it mounts it on my desktop and these are you know it looks like I'm listing the contents of that folder but really I'm listing the contents of that network share um, now you know I did that as root so I don't have permission to unmount like if I try to unmount here it's gonna tell me hey you can't do that and let's see what it looks like if I run the mount command and list my mounts notice here's the IP address 199.207.13.13 okay so if I want to unmount it I would simply use the umount command to unmount it and it's just going to be the folder name so I could use the absolute path but I could also use the relative path of mount me and if I do that and I run the mount command again notice the shortcut disappeared and notice when I run mount it's gone um, alright so again let's take a look at that um, you know, using the host name instead of the IP address since we set up a host name to IP mapping so I'm, I'm going to use sudo the mount command T I'm going to specify sys as the file system type this time the host name Pegasus the same you know share and the same syntax for a relative path to the folder I made to mount it to it's going to query me for the Samba password on that account that I'm using to authenticate on on the remote server I'm going to go ahead and put that in and now I've authenticated and again there it appears here's the folder and if I use the mount command notice that here it's mounted by host name either IP address or a host name but it'll 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 be mounted here so now I'm going to unmount it I'm gonna say you mount and I'm going to um, go ahead and put in the directory name okay so that was sys uh, via IP address and hostname now, now let's try the mount command uh, using the old SMBFS system so SMBFS uh, and again I'm just you know the syntax would be the same as far as specifying the server and what you want to mount to and the name of the folder that you created and again whoever has a Samba password Samba password account it will need to authenticate on the remote server you type that in and it's mounted and again you notice it's it's mounted and that's what it looks like all right so mounted by IP address and I could do the same thing by host name um, you mount and again I'm just going to unmount the folder and notice that it's gone okay so that was SMBFS and SIFS